Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger to Degree Hab. I am so glad to have you back and checking out what me and Chris are up to today. So in today's video, I am bringing you a pair of end tables. Yes, I just picked these up from Goodwill. I could not help myself but get them started, get them flipped, and I wasn't going to wait for multiples to share this, this process of what I did to these pair of end tables. My local Goodwill just got a furniture truck in. I did not know that that was a thing. So our store, local store, was packed with furniture. Though I didn't see anything, I cannot help myself when I run across pairs of end tables. And wow, look at these. They are huge, they are heavy, and they were only $10.09 a piece. Even though my camera won't focus in on it, yes, $10.09 a piece. So yes, when you first see these, you think, oh, they have a slate top in, but this, <laughs> this damage will show you, nope, that is a fake slate top. So when I was looking at these, I'm like, okay, they minimal sanding, they are a quick flip. They should be a quick flip anyway. So let's get these price tags taken off and start getting these scuff sanded. Some of the some of the scratches are a little bit deep, so I might have to go a little bit farther than that, but I'm hoping that to just have to scuff sand most of this. So scuff sanding is just where you take a 200 grit sandpaper or a little bit higher if you find it. But this just takes any of that shiny, helps any of the surface scratches, just opens up that manufacturer's finish. So when you go to paint it, it accepts the paint. It gives the paint something to stick onto. And I will share with you like, oh my goodness, these were beasts to lift up onto the work table. They are super heavy. So now that I've had them all sanded and blown off with the air compressor, it's time to get these items cleaning. And my go-to is some super clean and some hot water. Part of prepping a piece of furniture is a washing it off, getting any residue that might be left behind from the previous owner. And man, they stick those little made in China tags <laughs> everywhere. I didn't have to sand the bottom of this. And even though during sanding, I did not notice that one of the legs was loose and wonky. So this was one of an Allen wrench kind of fix. So luckily we, not only do you need a whole bunch of different screwdrivers, but you need some Allen wrenches. So I went around and made sure that every single one of the eight legs was nice and tight. Yet some of them were loose. Definitely needed some assistance to roll these in and out of our spray room. So we do have rolling carts that my brother was so graciously to salvage for us <laughs> so put a piece of the wood on there and then we're able to flip them upside down to roll them in and out of our spray room so on these tables i'm going to be using a rust-oleum's milk paint in eclipse i am absolutely loving on this paint along with my true coat 360 graco handheld sprayer So really, since I took the time to prep my surface really well with the scuff sanding and the washing it off and making sure that it was dry, it only took one coat to coverage on the underneath side. But when you look at that coverage, yep, one coat on the bottom, one coat on the top. And this is them now dry. Oh my gosh, it covers so well. Look at this decoupage paper. Oh my gosh, when I saw this, 
I ordered it right away. I didn't even have these when I ordered it. I could not help myself. Just absolutely thought this would make something fun and perfect fit because it has that square in the middle of these tables to cut these down and make them fit. So the previous ones I believe I had glued down first with using polycrylic and then cut off, but I thought, you know what? I think I can cut off if my paper doesn't shift on me while I'm cutting, um, I can feel that little inlay where the square is and maybe I can just cut these off first. That way I don't have so much to cut off after it is wet and dried. So I need something to glue down the paper. You could use a Mod Podge if you wanted to, but I'm just in the workshop and polycrylic works out just fine. So yes, it is as simple as that. Just a thin layer, layer of the polycrylic underneath, just gingerly laying it down. Now, I don't mind wrinkles. I've seen people use saran wrap or put their hand in a Ziploc. I like the wrinkles because I like it to look aged. So, so if you wanted it to look a little bit more flat and not so many wrinkles, you just let that layer dry before it, uh, putting any kind of a top coat sealer on the top of it. But for me, I want it to look a little bit wrinkled. I want it to have the aged look. So while it is still wet, I'm going to be applying some more of the polycrylic over the top of it. So how, how many of you watching thought this was just a crazy pattern? I think it's a fun pattern. Now I walked away from these overnight and let that completely dry. So now I'm gonna go in and do some distressing. And since the milk paint, actually you can water distress it, but I let it dry overnight. So I think my time frame might be a little go be gone on quickly water distressing it. So I'm gonna go in with some 220 sandpaper on all these beautiful edges. I love that this has that double edge at that top oh my goodness so just going in with the 220 sandpaper showing i'm really scrubbing down to that natural wood because as you know it was a dark wood underneath but the harder i push the more i can get into that lighter wood that was underneath that i'm going to switch over to a 300 grit sandpaper and smooth out all the rest of the surface area you can feel that bumpy from being sprayed or being painted so i want it to be nice and smooth so yep just taking that 300 over the rest of it now you have to trust the process because you thought oh my goodness this has left it a hot mess but trust your process Now, it really didn't take me as long as one would think. It was probably 15 to 20 minutes per each table to distress, but I absolutely think it's well worth it. It's just a look that I love. That way, you know, when you just stress a to stress a piece if you ding on it, if it gets a mark, it just adds more character to the way that it already looks. 
Now this is that little detail that's going to make it look like I didn't just glue a piece of paper in the middle of a table. So I'm just taking that same paint, the same milk paint, the same Eclipse color. I've got a stencil brush and I, I am dry brushing it. There's just a little bit of paint on this. So what I'm doing, I'm just doing little swirling techniques. I'm just doing a blending. So first I'll just get some paint on there and then I'll go back. I wanted to make it look like it has been, and yep, I'm using up whatever's left in the bottom of this. Don't we all, you paid for it all we got to use it all so yep I'm just going in and I, what I'm doing is kind of feathering it in I want to make it look like over time this has wore off it has aged that it has been there forever and it's just a label coming off So now I will walk away, go find something else to work on, and let that paint dry. Then now that the paint is dry, I need to go back in and sand the area, just the area that is on the wood itself. As you see, now it is um, dry and dull, but it's a lot darker than what the pre-sanded is. So to make my finished product blend and it doesn't just look like I went around and painted it, I need to sand that with that 300 grit, making it the same prosody, the same consistency as the other sanded area. So now the chalk paint is a lot different than what we are our, our usual black that we use. If you're noticing here, I did not have to spray anything on it to seal it in. I could just go ahead and sand it. And maybe that's why I am really liking on it. So now I need to go in and seal it in. And yep, I am using that Waverly Antiquing Wax. And I have to tell you the richness of how it grabs onto this meat milk paint has my heart. But it is definitely a lot more of a workout on my arm because I can definitely tell how it is absorbing the wax. And so I'm probably using a little bit more wax than what I was used to with my black onyx just right off the shelf from Walmart paint. But I definitely love the finished look and I can just tell that this paint is on here and this wax is on here and this is a great finish. And yep, I saved the top to last for the last. So now I'm going in and I'm just going to go ahead just like that same on the bottom of this wood. And I'm going to go right in and start putting antiquing wax on this. And you can definitely tell how this is just absorbing it in. And I really need to rub on it to make sure that every little area is getting covered. And you can tell when it didn't get enough of the wax in there. So definitely love that. And then I'm, as I'm working around the brown wax around the side, I'm letting it gingerly go over that black painted area that's on the paper. So this is really going to tie that and not make it just look like I just painted the outside of that paper. This is going to really bring that in together, give it that really that aged look that that paper's always been there. So just a little bit, I let it go on there. And it's a control thing, so it looks like it may not be, but I, I'm controlling what's going in there. So now I'm not applying anymore, I'm just feathering it in, just giving it that smoky, that look, and then I'll take the rag just gingerly and letting it catch on any of those raised crinkled areas, just tying it all in together. And the nice thing, if you try this technique guys and you get it too dark, just use some natural wax to take anything that you feel is too dark off. But I definitely love this look. 
Now I go ahead and let that dry for a couple hours. Now I'm just going to spray some polycrylic on the top of this. So I want, I'm not worried about the rest of the end table itself, but I know that people sit drinks and don't always use coasters. So I want to do a couple coats of the spray polycrylic only to seal this in. So yes, you, I, especially on that first coat, I don't want to use a brush and anything like that to put a top coat over the top of this because I don't want it moving that wax. Okay, so could you see why I couldn't, oh my gosh, that decoupage paper, I'd ordered it just in case it had come in like those coffee bean end tables that I did. I just absolutely love that look. And so when I ran across these end tables at Goodwill, I could not help myself. And yes, I'd already ordered this paper just in case I had found something on hand. So God wink moment, here they were. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope I have inspired you in any way to look at thrift store finds in a new way. And yes, pairs of end tables, some of that outdated look, how we can change it using that decoupage paper. And I know you're all like, I am just having so much fun with the decoupage paper and it is selling really well for us in our retail booth. So thanks again for watching today's video. And if you're, as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. Your kind compliments, your kind comments, and your likes lets YouTube know that you like this kind of content and they'll keep recommending us. And if you are new and checking out our content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what me and Chris are up to. Bye.